Good morning, class. Have you ever seen this kind of art before? You guys might wondering what are they doing. So this is one of Oliver Herring's styles, and I will show you. Based in Brooklyn, New York, German-born artist Oliver Herring is known internationally for his use experimental techniques as means to better understand human nature, individual behavior, and interpersonal dynamics. First of all, let's begin to talk about his biography. Oliver Herring was born in Heidelberg, Germany in 1964. Oliver Herring is an experimental, contemporary, and visual artist who currently lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. He received a Bachelor of Fine Arts from the Universities of Oxford, Ruskin School of Drawing and Fine Arts, Oxford, England in 1988, and Master of Fine Arts from Hunter College, New York in 1991. Now, let's discuss about his style and techniques. Oliver Herring worked in a wide range of media, including sculpture, knitting, photography, paintings, and videos. He is known internationally for his use of experimental techniques as means to better understand the human nature, individual behavior, and interpersonal dynamics. He provided platform for people or volunteers participants which allowed them to express themselves to become a part of the arts. Herrings also redefined the role of artists and audience, often becoming an observer of other performances in situations that he designed, but he can never wholly control. In his diverse work, which is neither entirely object-based nor entirely performance-based. He intended to remove boundaries between things and the activities people perform to create them. Moving to a types of works, Herring has created a lot of dominance work which is including different style and technique, but it is mainly focused on the unlimited ideas of people to experimental, open-ended, and accessible to anyone. Starting with his early work, in his early works were sculpture and performance pieces in which he knitted myla, a transparent and reflective material, into the human figures, clothing, and furniture. He was starting between 1991 to 2001, which is a series of knit sculptures. A big part of his early work in response to the suicide of Otho Echoberger in 1991. Herring's homage to Otho Echoberger, this trivial sculpture which evoke introspections, morality, and memories, are Herring's homage to Otho Echoberger, a drag performance artist who committed suicide in 1991 when he found out that he had AIDS. This project lasted 10 years and rewarded around making time through the gatherings of several stitched works. For example, Queen Bed with Court, created in 1993-94. He used a knit silver myla and parachute nylon to create this work. To find the meanings of it, as you can see, the vibrating surface of Queen Bed with Courts absorbs and reflects light suggesting an anxious beauty poised between this world and the next. And the next one is Double Rocker, created in 1999, a life-size rocking chair and a body knit out of silver myla and wire, shows successive motions of rocking at once. The chair has two backs and the person has physically shown twice. It is the expressions of life and performance. Moving to the next part of Herring Works, it is a performance of video art. Since 1998, Herring has created stop motion videos. Stop motion or stop frame, it is an animation technique that makes a physically manipulated object or person appear to move on its own. Herring dilates and documents these open-ended performances 
usually involving a series of actions which take place in different environments, including gallery or museum space, private homes, municipal buildings, and educational facilities. He creates sets of his videos and performance using only the most basic tools and materials from one artwork to the next. For example, video sketch 1, created in 1998. For this work, it is the same day that he brought his new video camera and the first attempt at making a video. Filming himself in stop motion, he selected a piece of neat myla cloth for a sculpture and animated it in connection to his body. In the next stop motion videos, video sketch 4, created in 1998, in this work, Herring turned his entire studio into a canvas, which is unfamiliar with technical aspects of filming, focused instead on color, shapes, and movement. Herring himself in stop motion, shifting costume and furniture colors. Since 2000, Herring has focused on collaborative meeting with volunteer participants. He directs and photographs these surreal open-ended performances, which often consist of impromptu and dreamy actions. Herring has created stop-motion videos and participatory performances with off-the-street dangers. The resulting of stop-motion videos and photographs that Herring creates not only records these impromptu activities, but it revealed the various ideas of humanities when Stenger exports their vulnerabilities and embrace to trust. For example, in this work's name, The Sun and Its Parts, created in 1999 to 2000. For this work, Herring worked with one person and spends over a couple months on it. He painted the participants, covered him in tape, and had him emerge for the pool and reflected Myla in stop motion. So let's take a look. Next, this work named Joyce and Davis, created in 2003. For this work, Herring work in his studios and he directs an older woman and young man to make a little dance based on the movement taken from classical ballet. The resulting videos is to a large degree of development on intimacy and trust. Another dominant type of his work is for the best work. Herring used to say that if somebody actually just walk up to you and say, Hey, do you want to do something out of the ordinary? They might be a little reluctant at first, but deep down you want to do it. It's an adventure. This is what brings people in front of the camera. Herring decided to do a new experiment of his photographic work by incorporating with participants by doing a kind of crazy stuff and letting the participants create an unexpected work by themselves. Then he also gathered the experience with them. This is the example of his photography work name, Chris After Hour of Splitting Food Dine Outdoors, created in 2004. So yeah, he just asked a stranger to participate with his photographic work and capture it. This is another one that Herring's also gather a great experience with the participants. This work called The Day I Persuaded Two Brothers to Turn Their Backyard into a Mud Pool, created in 2004. In this edition of piece, it's filled with images of two brothers horsing around their muddy backyard. 
In this video shows how fun that Thompsons and Mods, the True Brothers, gain the experience of appearing as a performer in the Mods play as a performing arts. He's like, Mud. I'm like, oh great, come over to my house. Going to my house in the back, flooded my backyard. Me, my brother, and my dog were all running and, and splashing. It was freezing in the freezing cold mud. That's my thing. I love it. And Oliver is totally into that. After a couple hours, basically, it gets hard. But you know what? We all get together and we're like, all right, let's push it. Let's keep going. We can't stop now. We're in the middle of it. So basically, kind of physical, mental, tired, you know, fatigue from doing it. And we just push through. So that's the most difficult part, but it's also very beautiful. And we always work through it, and we always get the most beautiful, rewarding stuff after working on it until we're almost going to die. The way we work in a group on these videos is wonderful, and anyone can do it. Moving to Herring Photo Sculpture Works. His works of photo sculpture are the products and intimate artist model interaction in which he photographs every part of their body and then apply the resulting print in the fragments with the greater detail proportionally sculpt human form in the process that takes many work sessions. The person changes, things happen, and change get incorporated into the piece. For example, the work named Gloria, created in 2004. Gloria is one of his most famous sculpture is a girl leaning against a wall in a colorful flower dress holding her necklace. Herring took pictures from every angle of her and then cut and pasted thousands of photographic charts in the place on a foam core human form. Next is Patrick, created in the same period of Gloria. Patrick is the man who posed for Oliver Herring in several studio sessions, in which the artist photographed the model's body in intimate detail. Herring invited his subjects to determine how they wish to present themselves physically, and Patrick chose to pose from the French sculpture named August Lodin's famous work The Thinker. Herring then carved a shape of Patrick's body out of foam core and covered it with patchy skin made of photographs. Moving to one of the most outstanding of his work is Tox Parties. In 2002, Herring created the Improvisatory Arts Event Tox, an ongoing series of events, workshops, and parties in which participants of all ages, demographics collectively dream up instructions and carry them out with the material provided. Herring has organized talks, gatherings, and workshops at the cultural and educational instructions around the world, often partnering with the local art museums. Increasingly, talks is become a tool in the classroom and communities assess the contemporary arts in a way that the experimental, open-ended, and accessible to anyone. The question is how to do the task. So, there are two simple rules of the task. First, participants have to write down a task on a piece of paper and add it to decided task pool. Then they pull the task from the pool and interpret it in any way they want, using a prop or material provided. When the task completed, participant write a new task and pull a new task and so on. This is the task at the former Federal Security Bank, Lake Worth, Florida in 2003. Oliver Herring usually said, in this case of my performances, it is about choice and interpretation. If you find a meaning in that, you might also find a meaning in a similar situation in your life. You might just look at life slightly differently. You might not look at the mundane situation as a mundane. You might see it as a holding potential 
to turn into something more beautiful, or meaningful, or something with which you can communicate to another person. Task is a piece of art and a creative tool. It is a point to access to contemporary arts that is experimental, open-ended, and accessible to anyone, whatever you are seven years old kid or a seventy years old retire. So everyone can enter it for free. So this is a tax parties at Madison Square Park in New York City, in two thousand fourteen. To sum up, tax open and ended. Participatory structures create almost unlimited opportunities for a group of people to interact with one another and their environment. Another word is is a play area in which the people can be themselves, and be whatever they desire. Herring says that these tasks can be interpreted however you want. The tools are your imaginations, and your imaginations is limitless. Last but not least, Oliver Herring's areas for action, for diverse works, Herring will present his ongoing projects areas for actions, an accumulative exhibition consisting of daily performances, improvisatory sculpture, and real-time collaborative artworks. Created on site with different groups of volunteers over several weeks, gallery visitors and members of general in the public are invited, participate, or simply observe. Areas for action take its little form during utilizations of gallery space, which is divided in defined areas of specific interventions and actions. For example, areas for actions in New York m u l l e n Street Gallery, New York, between October 7 and November 6 in 2010, it is called Color Speed Do It. It is a performance show two participants, one male and one female, spat food dine in c a l l i o g r a p h plums at each other. Footage was combined to create a short video. And this is areas for actions in Houston, Texas, start from January twenty one to March seven in two thousand and fifteen. It is called Color Speed c o r t r a i t For this introductory performance, four volunteer performers dressed in white spit water mixed with food dye, in c h o r o g r a p h burst in an otherwise empty gallery space. So. The areas for actions does not depends on objects or performance based, but it is intended to remove boundary between time based and non time based art work, between new media and physical art objects, and between viewers and participants. Areas for actions become a size of risk takings, experimentations, participation. Each of the actions was mostly based on the process or material from Herring's works in the past. Areas for actions was retrospective of process rather than objects. If Oliver Herring's areas for actions opening in Thailand, do you want to join it or not? Please just let me know in a comment. Thank you for watching.